Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Gabriel Knight, The Sins of the Fathers. Last time we met our titular character, Gabriel Knight, he has been having nightmares involving a dark woman being burned at the stake, involving snakes, involving himself being hung. Creepy stuff. Anyway, we are the owner of a uh, St. Michael's book, St. Anthony's bookstore, something like that. And, uh, well, we are doing research for a book that we are writing, and it is, we are doing research on voodoo, and there have been voodoo murders happening around town, apparently. More about that later. Anyway, uh, let's still do Gabriel some doesn't story. need the ash tree. Oh, even though it's kind of sticking out, we don't need it at the moment. All right. But we can actually go back here. This is where Gabriel's room is. Jeez, this place is messy. Let's take a look around. A little cold bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. Bills from last Christmas gather dust on the door. Uh-oh. Hopefully we can get that book done and, uh... It'll be a success. Gabriel's bedroom is also his office, his studio, and library. Do you really have to have a light shining right on the bed? I don't even know what want to know why you have that there. Gabriel likes a subdued lighting effect in his studio. All right. Jeans and T-shirts. Quite the wardrobe you have. Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. <laughs> The desk phone is cheap, but functional. All right, but we have no one to call right now, so let's not worry about that. The typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. Something about his movements reminds me of uh, The Legend of Corandia. At least, yeah, well, yeah, all the games, I guess. Like, I don't know, just something about this era of gaming. Gabriel's desk has been gathering dust since his last novel. Oh, he's written a novel already. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, he's written several. occupy the shelves above his desk. Have they been successful at all? Doesn't seem like it. We haven't. If he's not making too much money, then... Uh... <laughs> the medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. Well, she was pretty emphatic on the hair gel part, so I'm guessing we can grab that. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch-up. You never know. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? Good point. In fact, why even wash them? <laughs> Um, let's, uh, let's just get out of here. Not too much to do in here for now. And, um, I believe that's all I really want to do here. I want to take another look, because there's something I, I'm... Three snakes okay. in a skull. What a... So, uh, there's a, the, the title of the portrait is one I want to make note of. Make sure you know, even though it's like the third time I've, uh, looked at it. Three snakes in a skull. Alright, so there are a few things to look at, and uh, if you want, you can uh, keep looking in the German Dictionary, because there are actually some important words in there you'll need to know. But, uh, we'll, we'll all just, I'll just tell you what they are when it becomes relevant, which will actually most likely be this episode. So let's get out of here. Uh, I'll be back later. Good luck. A few things we can do. First of all, Grandma Knight wanted us to go through some stuff of our fathers. And we have this cool little world map here. Dixieland Drugstore, uh, St. George's Bookshop, St. Anthony. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Ben Jordan. Let's see, Historical Voodoo Museum, St. Louis Cathedral, Jackson Square, Jackson Square Overlook, Napoleon House, Conti Street, oh, Royal Street, the police station. Where's, uh, uh, we need to go to the Greater New Orleans map area and we get it further out, and that's where. Grandmother's Knight's house is. So that's kind of the neighborhood, but this is the Greater New Orleans area, and we want to go there. Uh, look at that cool uh, motorcycle animation. 
Yeah. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. Grandma Knight, she actually has some interesting things to say. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Aw, he loves his grandma. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. So, uh, let's, uh, take a look around. That's my gran. Adorable, as always. Aw, he's a grandma's Such boy. Such a tease. Granny likes soft lighting. Underwater portraits of Gran and Gramps when they were young. Gabriel's inherited some good-looking genes. <laughs> Love that narrator. Fresh carnations. Granny's favorite. Mostly pictures of Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. Okay. So, uh, let us begin some query. How you been, Gran? Exclamation mark. Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work, but I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. All right, so, uh, let's ask her some stuff. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Oh, look at her. She's so old. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. I guess it's not really uh, relevant then. Oh, well, we still need to do some research. All right, uh... What can again. you tell me? I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Oh, she has nothing else. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. Are your teeth made of wood or something? Are you like George Washington? What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. All right, good to know. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Graham. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden? I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. Peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan. Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fire and brimstone antics, and the piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for ma'am, went flying <laughs> off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew sweet. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. 
So, uh, Gabriel's father is an only son. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. Just tell me anything at all. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous little thing when your granddad and I were younger. I loved him so ferociously. And he did attract the eyes of the ladies, whether he wanted to or not. If only I had those skills. Just tell me anything at all. I get lonely sometimes. But I have lots of girlfriends in the neighborhood. I'll call one of them if I'm feeling blue. Ah, uh, Gabriel should visit more often. Just tell me anything at all. I wish you'd settle down and give me a great grandchild. Oh, grand. <laughs> Just I had your father. Okay. Oh nothing, never mind. All right, dear. Now, how about the Knight family? This one is very important. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Start with, uh, oh, that expanded a whole bunch of other options. Harrison Knight, our grandfather. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Good for Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I tell you what, girl, he hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> And I would tell him, it didn't matter to me, but he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me something about... Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. It took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Tell me something about Granddad. Did you know that your Granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Is there a book of poetry in the store? Tell me something. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay, nothing else there. How about Daddy? Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Nightmares, you say? Gabriel's been having some nightmares. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. Oh, Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Wait, let me get this straight. Harrison Knight died when Philip Knight was eight years old by being hit by a car. Philip Knight and uh, his wife died when Gabriel Knight was eight. They were in their car. It's interesting. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Uh, so granddad was a poet. Dad was a painter, as we've seen in the shop. And uh, Gabriel Knight is an author. Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him. 
try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Oh, I think that painting is pretty awesome. Tell me about my father. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay, so how about mother? Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Good idea. Worry about mom. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from a great aunt who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Ah, I see. So I gave Riel about the bookshop and opened it up. There we go. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. Why were they so opposed to that marriage? Tell me about my mother. I don't know. Oh, that's a compliment. Is it that, is a compliment supposed to be with an eye? You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. Molasses pie? That sounds... That, that doesn't sound good. That sounds way too sweet. You've lost weight. Are you caught in a new man? <laughs> oh, Andrew, don't be silly. You know there'll never be anyone but your granddad for me. Your hair looks very pretty today, Gran. Well, oh, why, thank you, dear. So does... Oh, um, always had such nice, thick hair, Gabriel. <laughs> but it's pretty messy. I guess that's how he likes it. You know, I always tell people that my Gran is the prettiest grand old belle in the city. Oh, dear. You shouldn't talk so. Yeah, people might question me, but no, he's just being a good grandson. You know, you get... Alright. So, the stuff that she wants us to look at is upstairs. Without further ado, let us go explore. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Alright, alright. So, let's take a look around. There's some interesting stuff to see here. That must have been the year Granddaddy caught Santa on the roof. <laughs> These old picture frames have been up here for years. Gabriel has seen these ornaments every year at Christmas for as long as he can remember. That's cool. It's a lady's hat from the 1920s. From Grand's Virginia Woolf period. And uh, this hat you might recognize as a reference to something. Name that reference. It's another Sierra game. The old velvet curtains hung in the parlor before Gran lightened up the place. Grandma's attic is a storehouse of forgotten treasures and useless junk. It's an old metal tub full of dust and cobwebs. There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father's. Huh. Well, there we go. There's something about fathers. That's what she wanted us to uh, go through. Let's grab it. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. All right. Let's actually uh, take a look at that right now. There are a few things with us. Let's uh, open up the sketchbook. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he definitely sketched some scary things. I'm not gonna lie. These would be some cool paintings, but. Uh, these are like, uh, scary stories to tell in the dark, jeez. I don't think you might recognize it. Remember, th this looks familiar, it kinda like something from uh, his dream. And notice... Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook. 
the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Anyway, let's like I was saying that uh, there's three snakes here. Three snakes here. There are three snakes in that painting. And remember that uh, book of poetry that uh, Gabriel kept gravitating towards? It was called the Rai Draken. If you uh, look up some stuff in the German to English dictionary, you'll find out that that means three dragons. Remember what uh, Grace was saying about uh, dragons coming uh, from old folklore of uh, snakes and worms and that kind of thing? Hmm, snakes, dragons, dry dragon. Something to keep in mind. Images hot. And there's also three rings here. Three rings here. Something with that number three. And this pendant. He also saw that. Remember, we got spattered with blood. I don't even know. Want to know what the heck this is? But uh, some images to keep in mind. And uh, let's take a look at this right here. An elaborate mechanical clock, probably of German origin, is among the discarded treasures of the attic. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. Interesting. Try to take it up. Gabriel doesn't want to take the clock. No, we can't take it, but we can manipulate it. Let's take a look. So that's an interesting clock. It has these symbols. It has a little wind-up key. A key winds the clock's mechanism. Nothing happens. All right. Let's take a closer look at this clock. A ring of six symbols surround the face of the clock. A star, a sun, an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. A noose, that's what I like more dream. And a, a dragon, too. Well, this is, of course, a puzzle. It's the minute hand. So, uh, remember, there was... Uh, let's do the move. The Drei Draken. There's a dragon here. There were so many uh, trios of snakes in our father's writings. I'm guessing this clock belonged to our father, too, so... Perhaps there is something to it. Ah, well, okay. So, uh, let's see, let's get the minute hand. Oh, we had to turn it there. We want it at... 3. Then we want to move... Why move that part of the clock? Oh, wait a minute, always oh, the same thing, we have to do this. Let's move the dragon head to the top. That's the dragon, right? I believe it is. And now, let's... Turn at this thing, Majigger. Granddaddy, you old fox. Did I track? That's kind of a tricky puzzle there. Let's take everything that's inside. And uh, get out of here. And let's look at what we have received. Three the old photographs show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. Yeah. Anything we can do with that? The photograph. The back of the photo ah. has the following written on it. Schloss Ritter, 1925. That name again, Ritter. It was Hans Ritter that was uh, the author of the poems. Oh, uh, what was that name? I can't remember. What is this anyway? The weed icon, okay. So, let's look at this. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. 
the letters written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of queer tip, bold strokes, and underlining. Interesting there, so uh, some more about Schlossritter, which is this castle here, I'm guessing, this location at least, in Rittersburg. And we have this word, Schattenjäger. We will, it'll take a while, but we will learn what that word means and how it relates to our family. So that is uh, all I care to do here, I believe, for the moment. Let's uh, ask Grandma a few more questions before we end things off. That's it. Take a load off, huh? Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Heinz Ritter. Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel, where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father, but I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter ah. before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. So he is the author of that book of poems. Why did granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America. But he didn't want to talk about it. He never even told me about his name change. I found out one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I've never questioned him about it. But I'm sure there was trouble with the law. And Granddad was the best man I ever knew. Didn't Granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. He believed in some family curse thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Whatever Harrison wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a faraway guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing, someplace he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child, it's a terrible way to live. So the Ritters are related to us. Did we get a call from someone with the last name Ritter? Is it Wolfgang Ritter? I wonder if there's any connection there. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I've told you all I know about your granddad's past. How about this word, Schottenjäger? Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Schottenjäger? Schottenjäger! I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Your granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Hard. Hmm. Thanks, Grant. Maybe we'll learn more about that later. Have you ever heard of... I don't know what... All right, so I believe... That is all for now with her. So, uh, we've learned some stuff about our family. Well, what bearing does that really have? I don't know. We're here to learn about voodoo and the voodoo murders. So, uh, we could just put this stuff on the wayside. But what can we learn about voodoo? Well, let's try to discover something about that next time on Let's Play 
Gabriel Knight, The Sins of the Fathers. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.